Orleans payment panel live from CTA in New Orleans. I'm Charlotte Forrest, I'm the founder and uh, president of Women in Wireless. And Women in Wireless is a non-profit organization that helps promote and develop female leaders in the mobile industry. And I'm here today with four mobile experts to talk about mobile payment. Before I go on and introduce um, these wonderful ladies, I want to define mobile payment. So mobile payment in this discussion is a purchase of a good or a service where the mobile, uh, mobile phone is part of the, the payment process. And it can be a virtual, digital or physical goods and service. And the purchase can be made in person or in the store or remotely. So, uh, to get everyone started, I would love if each one would you could get a brief introduction of yourself and talk about um, some of the most important trends that you see in mobile payment. Sure. Sarah. Um, hi, I'm Sarah. I'm with Accenture. I've been with the firm for about nine years, uh, working primarily in the wireless and uh, telecom industry. Um, my background has been primarily working with companies trying to introduce new wireless products and services and um, implementing the systems and platforms uh, to allow such uh, products to be successful in the market. Um, uh, so that's my background. I think in terms of mobile, mark, uh, mobile payments, I think if we're looking you know, 6 to 12 months out, there's a lot of talk about NFC right now. Um, and I think the expectations are that NFC will be the standard, especially from a smartphone uh, phone perspective. However, I think it's going to take us a little bit longer to get there. And I think what we're going to see right now are new entrants, people trying to come in with different technologies outside of NFC to try to get a piece of the pie. Um, and, and that's really until we see the growth of NFC enabled handsets, merchants, you know, taking up, um, you know, as part of the ecosystem, I think we're going to see a little bit of uh, a delay in the mass adoption for NFC. And in the meantime, we're going to see some other players and technologies come in, you know, in the, in the upcoming year right now. I'm Marjorie DeHay. I'm the general manager for MEF. We are the global community for content and commerce. Um, my background is in entertainment. I was at MGM Studios Marketing and then a lot of media for the Irish government handled their telecoms division and their entertainment division. Where I see the industry going is absolutely NFC is going to be a piece of the pie right now because I think it solves the secure element, consumer trust. People like to have something physical on their phones to make them feel secure. Where I think it will ultimately go is a lot of good cloud-based solutions, but they have to, again, solve the issues of if you're in a subway or solve the issues of what if you can't access the cloud. So really, I think in the next, you know, I, I agree with you, in the next 12 months, it is going to be an NFC-type solution. And I think there's, there's a lot of interesting solutions here today. So I think it's going to be a very interesting discussion on where it's going to be in the next 12 months and in the future. Jennifer Morans, VP of Marketing at Criticism. We are a mobile app performance management platform and focus a lot on uh, crash reporting and mobile app activity and, and enabling developers uh, to optimize their apps and improve their even their in-app purchase and payment flows. So I think that's an interesting um, dynamic we can discuss today. And as far as trends, I think that by 2015, I think that we're going to see NFC will be predominantly the method for mobile payments. I think um, in the interim, there are a lot of opportunities for um, credit card purchasing and optimizing that. We're seeing a lot of the credit card companies come out with their new solutions, but as devices become standardized with NFC, then we will see that as the predominant trend. Um, so I think that that uh, will be interesting to see how the evolution of that happens over time. I'm Michelle Turner. I am the CMO for MBlocks. MBlocks is a um, global mobile uh, engagement company. We enable other companies to drive mobile engagement solutions um, that include both messaging as well as smartphone engagement solutions through push and geolocation. And we've been in the mobile commerce space for a number of years now through the premium SMS market and moving into the carrier bill market. And we're seeing a lot of growth right now and a lot of evolution in the carrier billing market, particularly in the United States. It's largely taken place already um, throughout Europe. 
and I'm really interested to see how that market takes off. It's a very, um, it's an evolving market right now, and as the U.S. entrants come into that space and are really pushing more direct carrier billing um, solutions that can be integrated into handsets and integrated more into the mobile solutions for consumers to take advantage of, I think over the next six to 18 months, that's gonna be a very viable solution and a really good way for merchants to start um, seeing better um, conversion rates on their sales because it's a really good option for people to be able to do their low-end sales or virtual good sales or purchases uh, straight onto their carrier bill. Uh, and so we're, I think we're gonna see a lot of growth in that area. Great. So for people that are new to the mobile payment space, um, you mentioned some uh, different terms here that I would love for you to explain. So Sarah, NFC for right. people that are new to the to the business. Right. What does that mean? Um, yeah, it's a term used quite often in the mobile space, but um, maybe not everyone's familiar with what it means. It, it stands for near field near field communications. It's a safe and secure and short range wireless technology used for two electronic devices to speak to each other. So in, in this scenario, we're talking about our handsets and say the merchant's point of sale system. So um, it's a technology that allows um, a transaction and interaction between these two systems which makes a payment uh, fairly simple and, and, and secure. Um, so that's kind of why it's the predominant technology that's talked about a lot these days because um, uh, it is secure and uh, but but you see the, the the problems with it is you need the handsets to be capable of NFC as long along with the, the merchant systems as well. So that's kind of where the obstacles are but I think once we get there I think it's a technology that you know, most people will, will end up using. Great, and, and Bajori, you uh, mentioned cloud-based cloud solutions. What, what do you mean with that? Well, I mean, everybody's been talking about the cloud. So basically, it's, it's a secure system that you'll be able to use either an in-app, so an app to actually access your security information. So that's gonna be held in the cloud. So you don't need to have a actual physical you know, chip or secure element on your phone. So that information is stored elsewhere and it's secure. And that's the key because when you talk about any of these payments, I think the key is consumers have to feel some kind of trust, some kind of a security. Merchants have to feel like there is a secure element or some type of security. So a lot of cloud-based solutions being offered now offer that type of security. And Michelle, you talked about premium SMS, carrier billing, direct carrier billing. Um, can you explore? Sure. So, more? I mean, at a, at a very basic level, carrier billing is just being able to charge a typically a digital good, a low end good, a ringtone, something like that, um, when you purchase it uh, straight onto your your cellular bill. And this has been in place for years. Uh, the most the commonplace way of doing it today is you're on a web page. This happens with my kids. They type in my phone. Oh, I want to buy that. You know, I want to buy that song or I want to buy that ringtone. I type in um, the phone number. A uh, pin is then sent to my mobile device and entered back in on the web page. And then the asset is downloaded onto my phone um, or my child's phone, uh, depending on who it is. That method is changing. The out, really, the, the way of doing it, the interface for the consumer is going to change a little bit. Um, the back end of that to make it even more secure and um, to provide, I think, better safety security for consumers as well as, um, as you know, better viability for the carriers. That whole back end is changing and going. It's through a direct carrier bill process, and we're taking out the PSMS, the, the SMS loop in that. Um, and we, I think with that, we're going to see a lot of growth in the carrier bill market because it's going to become more commonplace. Um, the merchants that we've talked to, they're very interested in adding that in as a way. If you, for instance, if you have an application on a handset, on a smartphone, and it is um, an HTML5 based application, and you want to be able to do an in app purchase today, hard to do, very simple to do that. Uh, buy that article on Condé Nast through direct carrier bill type of payment. So I think we're going to start seeing this type of payment open up a lot of new options for merchants and folks that are trying to figure out how do I monetize now? How do I go out of that freemium model in the application space and um, be able to increase my conversion flow? So. so something that all of you mentioned during your 
discussion here is security. So you think, do you think security is the biggest challenge for adoption or are the other things? Uh, do you want to start, Jennifer? Sure. I think that there's uh, a lot of technical issues that need to be addressed. I mean, I think that there is a significant amount of effort around consumer privacy and ensuring that the data is secure and that there aren't breaches of that of that security. But I think that it's very important to it to achieve the adoption that we want on mobile payments. It's good, there's going to be a lot of education to the consumer to ensure that they feel confident that that NFC chip in their phone is authenticated and that it has secure information and it won't, there's no issue. Um, I think that when we by purchasing through mobile web pages and entering your credit card information, or you know how, how premium SMS works. There's there's still some user experience challenges. So I think that there may be some inherent um, issues with security at that level. So I think that over time, as the technologies evolve and consumer adoption increases and consumer um, consumer the consumer is educated on the different types of technologies, then we'll see we'll see education there. But um, there's, uh, I think it's important for us to really ensure that the consumer privacy and their data is secure. So. Yeah. I see Michelle nodding here. Do you mm -hmm. agree? I, 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 Jennifer hit on something that was important is that it's got to be easy mm -hmm. for consumers right. to use and I buy a lot of stuff off of my phone um, and I typically use applications where via the web they already have, whether it's Amazon or Gilt, they already have my credit card information. And I've created a kind of a trust arrangement with that merchant already, and um, there's a, there's a sense of security there. So I'm not sure. I, I, I actually got a real question as to whether consumers have trust with the brand, or if it's an issue with the phone. So I think when new technologies such as NFC come on board, mm -hmm. are they going to feel good about swiping? You know, I think there's going to be a curve where. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a while for, like, my mother-in-law to feel comfortable swiping her phone to pay for something. She, you know, it, there's going to be an adoption curve in that. Um, but for folks that are just buying today, making that payment flow really, really smooth and simple. Absolutely. I mean, and in some of the apps that we have today, it's almost too smooth and simple. <laughs> I buy way too much stuff. Um, but it'll be interesting as the conversion to something like NFC happens to so you're buying your latte at, you know, Starbucks and swiping in real time. That's going to be the interesting conversion, I think. Absolutely. I want to actually talk about this because we did discuss this the other day about brands. It's like yeah. you're okay buying like from Starbucks because you trust the Starbucks brand or Guild yeah. or any of the others because you trust that brand. Mm -hmm. And then I think that is a consumer adoption. It's like who's going to be the leader? Yeah, you know, PayPal obviously came out with PayPal here or Pay here, and you know, it's a dongle that goes on your device and it makes it very easy to trans, you know, to do mm -hmm. credit card swiping for merchants. It's a trusted brand. Square educated the market on how to yep. do this, and now PayPal is taking that and saying, hey, merchants, we're making it easy for you. We're a brand you already trust. Because I think mm -hmm. when you have that consumer trust, that leads to mass adoption. Yeah, I. For me, I think security is just a prerequisite. I, I don't think it's a, a barrier necessarily for customer um, adoption. I, I think you have to educate your customers and say it's secure, and, and they have to trust that it is. But I think mm -hmm. adoption for mobile payments is less about security. You can have the most secure app product out there, and if they don't see the value in it, they're not going to adopt to it. So. I see security as a prerequisite. You have to address it, and the customers have to trust that it's secure. Um, but really, I think what's going to drive adoption is not security. It's, it's more about what's the value in me switching my behavior and, and now using this new payment you know, mechanism. Yep. So going back to our definition about mobile payment, that it can be in person or right. remotely, what are some of the successful um, models that you have seen out there? And if you could relate to if it's in person or if it's remote. I don't know, Sarah, do you want to start? Um, yeah, when we talk about you know, models that work, uh, we, we do have to look at it in two views. There's you know, what we call developed countries and markets and, and emerging markets. And I think what we've seen with the emerging markets and why there has been great success there um, is uh, the, the lack of maturity in, in banks, uh, the adoption for mobile payments is actually expected to be way higher than adoption to credit cards or even banks in general in emerging markets. So I, I think generally they've, done, they've been more successful, the models out there. 
And that's not necessarily a model that we can just pick and drop here in the state of states. Um, and because we have well-established payment systems mechanisms, there's no fear of carrying around cash. Or um, we have easy access to ATMs, you know, our wallets, and we don't have the fear of carrying it around. So I think what we've seen successful in, in emerging markets actually can't be replicated here necessarily. We have to think of different models, right? And it's going back to how do we get the consumers here to change their behavior in terms of payment. So um, I think what we've seen work well won't necessarily work in other places and people really need to think about you know, what is the value for someone in say North America that's going to work for them. I think what really works um, in-app billing I think always works because, you know, think th think of a world like four years ago when we didn't have apps. I mean, but you see how easy it is. It goes back to the ease of use. You push, you push, you're bumped. And that's really, anything that makes it super easy for a consumer to use, it, it's going to take traction. And you're right, there's so many different models. Now, do I want my carrier to become my bank? So you're talking about carrier models and, you know, billing to my mobile. Well. It works for certain things. It works for content. It works for this. But you know, if I'm going out to buy the you know, a blouse, yeah. the groceries, right, yeah. whatever, is that is that going to work? Do I really want you know, Sprint or Verizon or AT and T to know what I'm buying at the grocery store? Probably, <laughs> probably not. So, you know, it's. I think I like in-app billing just because it's easy. But again, it's not going to work for everything. So really, we get back to what's going to be easy for the customer and. I think there's just great models out there right now that really do work. NF billing, I think, is a great model that already works. It's already working, but with NFC, when all the phones and handsets have that secure element, I think that's really going to take off. The previous organization I worked with, Buck, we uh, recently did a campaign for New York Fashion Week where we brought in SpiderLink, which is a prettier QR code. Uh, reader and they have an application that you download and we also uh, had I think we had 65 advertisements with the QR code in the Glamour magazine so we did that over a series of a quarter and you were able to uh, and then during during fashion week we also had taxi cabs uh, that you could purchase uh, cosmetics and and goods and then also a paywall we had across from the Standard Hotel in the Meatpacking District, which was really, really fun. You could um, use the QR code reader to purchase cosmetics and items and perfumes and things. And um, great success from that campaign. It did take um, a number of, of technologies uh, to implement on the back end, but um, we had great adoption and it was uh, a nice way to educate educate consumers. And, and uh, so it was, a, I think, a very successful campaign. Leading on to, I, so I was just, when I was thinking about, you know, in, in person versus remote, one of the things that I've done recently is find more and more, I have a QR code and I've, like, I purchased tickets on Fandango on my phone and then I go swipe it in the movie theater. But I remember the first time that I actually paid for a parking ticket with my phone and did the swipe on my phone. And in the back of my head is, is this really going to work? Mm -hmm. Like, am I really going <laughs> to, is the gate going to lift? And am I going to be able to get out? And I think that's the interesting thing about right. in-person as we start paying right. for this stuff on my phone, educating consumers mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. this is how a QR code is, this is right. what it is, this is how it works, this is what you get from it. And I think that revolution is going to be, um, it's going to be, it's going to be big. It's going to take a while for people to get comfortable with that. Absolutely. And um, because I, I've been in mobile for 12 years and I, I've used a lot of mobile technologies and for me to go, is this really going to work? You have to think about, okay, what's the average consumer going to be able, what's their experience going to be with this? So, mm -hmm. But it is exciting. I think we're going to see this grow and grow over the next five years significantly. And um, it'll be a lot of changes that happen in North America. They're very different from what's happening um, in other parts of the world where they already have this. Yeah. Any examples for remote uh, payment models that do you think that you have seen in the past that's been remote. working? In terms of carry billing or uh, well I think that a lot of I mean I, a lot of times when you are um, buying stuff just via the web and it integrates into the carrier billing model that I, I, I think that, that I see that yeah. I think that happens all the time yeah. for me that's a little bit more common I do agree though I think when it comes to carrier billing it's this very specific type of it's typically a low-end digital good that you're purchasing and uh, most of the carriers have dollar limits on what they're gonna allow you to, to purchase so 
you know, when you're gaming or something like that, and you're, you're buy, you need to buy another virtual sheep for something. Great example of that, and, and necessarily remote um, as it is. So that's typically where I see that hit. That's great. So if we broaden the discussion a little bit and, and talk about uh, mobile commerce or M commerce, um, why do you think that there is not more customer adoption than what we see today, or to spin it a, a little bit more positive, what do you think are the critical aspects for M-commerce to work? Um, Shell, do you want to start? Or? Sure. Yeah? I, I, I think it goes actually back to, uh, we hit on some of this already, but for it to go mainstream, it has to be something that is in the flow of what I do every day. It has to be, security has to be a given. You have to, I mean, it just has to be there. It's going to be with the brands that I know. And I think user experience, making it just absolutely dead simple for consumers to do, where they don't have to think, they feel like, I'm going to push this button, it's going to be secure, the payment's going to go through, I'm going to get my stuff. That has to be flawless. And how that evolves through in-app payments, through um, mobile web payments, where I think the next big evolution of this is going to be, as frankly, more and more merchants try to get a lot around the app store. Um, making that user interface, that user flow, just perfect. Just, you know, it has to be seamless. is going to be critical for that to take off. And I think if you look at e-commerce as an entire category and you look at the, the premium SMS, you look at mobile banking, you look at mobile payments, you look at, I mean, there's so many sort of subcategories within, within that as a larger category. I think that does go back to, to the security, the consumer adoption, the technology evolution, um, and, and the, that we'll, we'll start to see you know, significant, significant growth, but, um, but I think that w it will, will take a little bit more time and, and, uh, and education in the market. So, so but I, th I agree with you. I think mobile web is uh, a very interesting area and sort of a, as the NFC adoption starts to grow, I think that there's a big opportunity on the mobile web front for being able to authenticate devices through mobile web, um, different technologies around that, so that we're able to easily recognize what, who the consumer is and, and uh, um, sort of tie a payment instrument to that mobile web transaction or experience. So I think that there's going to be some interesting things happening in that space, but, but then uh, as NFC involves, I think that will become the predominant. Um, I think I'm looking at it more from an industry perspective because I think we do a lot of work with e-commerce. We work with an organization, X9, which is a financial standards creating body. Bank of America, Wells Fargo, all the financial institutions are trying to solve this issue because as an industry right now, we have a great opportunity to create the standards to say, this is how it needs to work. These are the security issues we need to address. These are the privacy issues we need to address. And as an industry, we really have to come together and address those standards to move it forward because you don't want to be in the position that you know online providers have where you have the FTC and other government organizations who, who we're working with also come down and penalize you because you didn't disclose to your consumer how they were buying, they get overcharged. I know SMS had a lot of issues when it first came out. You know, I got you know a $400 bill just for my SMS. I didn't know as a consumer. So we really have to address those privacy issues. We have to address those security. And it's a great opportunity right now to come together as an industry to really make the e-commerce model work. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll probably go back to what I talked about in terms of what's going to drive adoption. Is I think. In addition to seamless user interface, that's really important. But you also have to really see the value in this, right? And I think that's probably the biggest obstacle, I think, with uh, developed markets is I can easily take my credit card and swipe. What's going to get me to change to use my phone? And um, you know, things are loyalty and promotions are ways to incentivize customers to now look at another method. And, and that goes both for consumers and merchants, right? We need merchant adoptions in addition to consumer adoption. and. And really, it's, I think it's actually harder for merchants to adopt this. If you look at the hand hand, or handset life cycle, consumers turn their handset a lot quicker, right? Mm -hmm. So enabling an NFC uh, or getting an NFC-enabled handset is a lot likelier for a consumer than it is for a merchant to, to change out their system. So you really have to incent both the merchants and the c customers to, to try this new mechanism. And, and you're going to look to see people trying to look at add-ons and loyalties and promotions to get them to get there. And, and you really have to 
clearly say this is the value you're going to get by switching over uh, to mobile payments. And I think that is how you know this can be successful. So looking at, at M Commerce, is there anything that the that it brings to the uh, uh, payment ecosystem that we didn't have uh, in the past. I'm thinking end users browsing on the phone, in store, uh, having a po possibility to build loyalty with consumers, knowing more about them. Um, oh, I'll feel this one because yeah. we just were talking about this earlier with um, one of our members is Pay One, and think about this. The ease, of, the ease of use of a mobile phone for things that you normally pay with change. Parking meters, laundry. I'm sure we've all had this one where I'm like, I've got to go find you know, a roll of quarters so I can do my laundry. So really on that micropayment physical, I, I think great solutions. And I think that's going to be what's going to drive the adoption forward. So I think, and from um, operator Carrie said, you. You, you have a lot of personal information on your mobile phone. It's a valuable tool. I mean, you probably have the most personal information on that phone, your contacts, your friends, your habits, etc. So there is a lot of opportunity, and I think that's also where there's opportunity, there's concerns, but there's a lot of opportunities for advertisers to, to target, etc. And we all say, oh, I don't want to be targeted by advertisers, but sometimes we do. You know, we were chatting about this yesterday. Mm -hmm. I want to know if hey, this pair of shoes I like is 20% off. And then I can just buy them like that. Or I watch a TV show and I'm like, I love that outfit and I can buy it on my phone. Those are things people do want, but mm -hmm. then they get concerned about you know being targeted or advertised. But there is, I think, just so many opportunities for advertisers, for brands, et cetera, to create a really strong loyalty. And so when we talk about mobile payments, I think we have to look at the cash mobile payments, but also loyalty mobile payments. It's like I fly American, I'm almost a million miles. So if American is targeting me and saying, hey, you know, you can use these points right now to buy XYZ that you want to buy, I, I would probably do it. So I think there's a lot of value in that loyalty programs that M Commerce can bring. Right. I think the ecosystem will continue to grow as um, as the technologies evolve. So for example, new loyalty companies that are specifically focused on mobile, or that are integrating with the existing systems within the stores. Um, so we'll, I think we'll start to see a number of, of new entrants on that front as well. So I think that um, sort of ancillary uh, businesses around the ecosystem will continue to expand. I think it's interesting to see how the new technologies around push as well as geofencing, geotargeting are making just what you were talking about happen in real time. And I'm fascinated by how brands are going to be using this in the future because right now, I mean, I have, like all of us, we have a ton of apps on my phone. And um, out of all the apps I have, there is one brand that reaches out to me every day via a push message and they tell me that my favorite shoes are on sale. And I have bought a lot of stuff from that particular store because um, via my phone, because it's relevant, it's timely, and then you start thinking about the offers that can be made in place by these brands when they know where you are. And absolutely, the consumer has to opt in. And I think that goes back to the privacy things. You know, you have to be able to give the consumers opt in. They're going to reject your offer if you are not opted in. But if I'm walking by my favorite coffee place and they decide to say, "Hey, Michelle, you've been in a while." here's a dollar off on a latte, I'm going to be thrilled with that offer and I'm probably going to take advantage of it. So that evolution, and, and that's what we think about at Mblocks is mobile engagement, but driving that mobile engagement is going to increase conversion, it's going to increase mobile commerce, and I really do think that over the next few years, yeah, we're going to have some stumbles on getting it right with privacy, unfortunately, and but we will learn and that's going to be the way that we are engaging people. I find it so exciting. I mean, this the. The phone is the, the device that most of us have with us all the time. I mean, it is an incredibly personal piece of hardware. And, um, and to be able to really utilize that to enhance people's day is, is a great thing. And we're, on the, we're starting to do it right now. So. Good. Um, so for brands, uh, merchants that are new to mobile payment, any devices for them, what should they focus on? Uh, because we're trying to talk about the next six to 12 months. What, what, what is your advice to them, Michelle? So we're working with a lot of brands right now, and um, to me, it's all about really engaging with your customer. I mean, you have, if you're gonna spend the money to create a mobile application, 
you better be talking to your customer via that mobile application. The technology is there to do it today. Between geofencing, push, SMS, integrating that into your application, figuring out ways to do that intelligently by, if you're going to push content to them, push it at the right time of day, push it in an appropriate place. Make sure if you're doing rich content downloads to them that you're not doing it and eating up all their batteries. So there's a lot of technology out there today that help them do that intelligently. But make sure that if you're spending $50,000 to develop an application, um, that you're talking to your customer, you're engaging in a two-way conversation. And that's what mobile technologies are enabling today that kind of, I think, creates this full mobile engagement cycle and enables the commerce to really happen. Because there are just too many branded apps today where somebody says, well, I've got to have a mobile play. And so the marketing director runs out and gets a mobile application made and it's there. And they're like, look, we've had 100,000 downloads or you know, a million downloads, isn't that great? But if they look at how many times the application's been opened, I think that there's a stat I heard that, that most mobile applications are opened um, once. 95% of mobile applications are open once. And that's it's awful. And through the technologies that we have today, we can do so much better than that. Brands can do so much better than that. They can really create a whole new level in the way that they're engaging with their customers. So that's my big thing is use the technologies out there. Learn how to use the technology that's out there. Work with the companies that know how to do this to help you really create that two-way engagement that you've spent so much money trying to build. So. I think it's very important for mobile app developers to really focus on user experience and ensuring that they that their mobile app is is stable, that it is optimized, that every mm -hmm. step of the way they have the least clicks possible for the consumer to get the uh, item that they're looking for, the information, the content, the upgrade to their app, the wearable for their avatar, etc. Right. So um, that was actually no, why I joined. Um, is because what we do is give uh, developers a, a, a dashboard where in real time they can see everything that's happening within the app. So they can see real time uploads, they can see any type of crash that's happening, they can see down to the line of code that's causing the crash, they can see what data is in the, what is in the shopping cart, um, uh, all sorts of interesting information. So I think that's, it's very critical for as the developers evolve and the technologies evolve and and all the different OSs and devices and mm -hmm. fragmentation, that they, they have a way to make sure that the consumer has the best experience possible. So I think that's that's a really, really important aspect of the evolution of this, this space. Um, I think brands have to, again, be open. You know, so it, it's great to see, like one of our members is Coca-Cola, and what they want to see is a Coke in one hand and your mobile phone. So they are doing some really creative things to push the boundaries because they have a, if you think about it, it's a historic brand. It's been around for quite a long time, but they're constantly evolving and they're constantly trying new things. Because what's going to work for Coca-Cola may not work for Target. What's going to work for Target may not work for um, you know, Universal Studios. So really, I think um, what I love about being at shows like CTA, CTA is you do see all the startups coming up. Because there's startups that are kind of coming out with the new ideas, the fresh ideas. And I love to see the brands that are just actively adopting it and you know trying different things. It, it's a great time to be in mobile. It really is. Good. Right. Um, I'll probably take a little bit of a uh, you know, bigger view. I think in order to be successful, um, it's going to have to be collaborative. Um, as as and you'll see a lot of that going, in, going on now. I mean, Century's been involved in a lot of collaborative efforts where carriers are getting together and banks are getting together. And I think the bigger footprint you have, um, the more successful you'll be with adoption. You know, I know we've talked about adoption a lot here, but um, I think collaboration is important and really getting different parties involved in this big ecosystem uh, aligned and using the standards and, and you know security means to, to do that but it, it is going to be a collaborative effort I think and uh, I think that's the best way to be successful here and, and again like I said you have to be clear on demonstrating what is the value the customer is going to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Great. So I want to thank you all for being on the panel today and with that I want to say thank you. We have a Thank you. 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 Thank you.